Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. Today I wanted to make a video on the return on investment for raising our three pigs this year and to figure out was it worth it for us to raise our own pigs for meat. I will tell you right now that it was not cheaper than buying the same amount of meat from Walmart, but that's not really why we were doing it. On March 19th of this year, I took my kids in my van with an extra large dog crate to buy our three little pigs. We drove to a local farm about an hour and a half away to pick them up, and we purchased three Yorkshire, Berkshire, Duroc crosses, but I did end up getting one that was white, one that was black, and one that was red to make it a little bit fun. They were Duncan, Fergus, and Hamish. And so we raised those three pigs from March until September 29th, which was the day that they were processed. So I'm going to be putting a lot of numbers or telling you about a lot of numbers in this video. So I'm going to put them on the screen as I'm talking so you can follow along. So like I said, we got our pigs on March 19th. We processed them on September 29th. That is 194 days that we had those pigs. When we first got our pigs, they were about eight weeks old. They weighed probably 25 to 30 pounds. And when we processed them at eight and a half months old, they ranged between 235 and 269 pounds. To be exact, the smallest one was 235 pounds. The one in the middle was 240, and the largest one was 269 pounds. There is a difference between the live weight of the pig and the amount of meat that you actually get back from the processor. It usually is about 62%, I think I've seen on the internet. Again, this is my first time doing it, so I have to base that off of research. But from live weight here on your farm to the packages that you get back from the processor, you're going to get about 62% of that weight back. So we got about 400 pounds back from the processor. I filled out a cut sheet when we were at the processor and he was amazing and so nice walking me through what cuts of meat we wanted, what was important to us, did we want more spare ribs or did we want country ribs, did we want pork tenderloin or did we want bone in pork chops and how much sausage did we want. When we set up our cut sheet, we did prioritize sausage because that's the main meat that we are currently buying. And so we got over 150 pounds of sausage. <laughs> They're all in one pound packs. And so we have over 150 pounds of this in our freezer. After prioritizing sausage, we did want pork tenderloin, we wanted ham steaks, we wanted spare ribs, and bacon, and definitely the bacon, obviously the bacon. So in the end, we got about 11 packages of ham steaks, 30 packages of pork tenderloin, five packages of picnic roast, nine packages of Boston butt roast, two of the big hams, that we could make for Christmas. We got three packages of leaf lard. We got six packages of spare ribs, four packages of bacon, over 150 pounds of sausage. We have our meat currently in a 15 cubic foot freezer that is pretty full to the brim. And then we have another seven cubic foot freezer that is about halfway full of the pork meat. I showed you the sausage that we got. Each sausage comes in one pound packs, which I love because they're easy to defrost and that's about how much I make. Probably next year I might have to bump it up to about a pound and a half as we start eating more and more as my kids get older. Here's an example of the pork tenderloin. I chose to put three uh, chops in each package because we eat about six for dinner. Oh, here's another pork tenderloin. And some sausage. What else do I have in here? Here is a big roast. Here's a Boston butt roast. I love to make pulled pork, so I'm excited to use these for some pulled pork sandwiches or pulled pork mac and cheese I love to make. We got 
some spare ribs. We have six full racks of spare ribs. And the bacon. Here's the bacon that we got. And let's see what this one is. Here's a picnic roast. And I will, to be honest, I'll have to look up the difference between a picnic roast and the Boston butt roast and the most ideal way to cook each of them because I've only gotten pork roast and used it in my pulled pork. So I'll have to do some research on that and see the best way to cook each one of them. And let's see, I have, ooh, here's a big ham that we got. And here's some ham steaks. And let's see. Here's more Boston butt. I'm just going to make a mound in front of me. And the lard. So I am pretty excited. This is leaf lard, which is really, really good to um, render down, I think is the term that you use. It's really good to render down and you can use this in your baking. So I'm excited for that. There's so much meat. I'm so excited. So now that we talked about the meat that we got back from the processor, I wanna talk about the actual numbers to determine whether it was actually worth it to raise these pigs ourselves rather than buying it from a local farm or even from Walmart. In March, we bought our three pigs for $300. They were $100 each. And in the time that we raised them, we spent $1,200 in feed. We did supplement their food quite a bit with table scraps. I had a five gallon bucket sitting by the kitchen door that I would fill up about a third of the way every day and feed them that food. But still, pigs just eat a lot. <laughs> so we had to buy a lot of feed. So the 300 for buying them plus the 1200 for feeding them and then the $745 for processing them, our total cost for the pigs this year came out to $2,245. If I take that amount and compare that to the amount of meat that we got back, which was 400 pounds, it comes out to $5.61 per pound that we paid for our pork. Now, if you wanna compare that to Walmart prices, we paid a lot more. <laughs> Buying the same amount of meat from Walmart would come out to about $1,500. So we paid about $700 more than we would have if we bought that meat from Walmart. But again, that wasn't why we decided to raise our own meat. I'll get more into that in just a minute. Now, raising our own pigs and buying the pork from Walmart weren't our only options. We had been buying some of our pork from a local farmer who pasture raises his pigs and we know where the pigs grow up. We know the life that they have and we're happy with how they're raised. However, it's much more expensive. So instead of the $3.50 per pound that we could get at Walmart or the $5.61 per pound that we could raise our, on our own, buying it from a local farm would cost about $7.50 on average per pound. So buying the same amount of meat that we raised would cost about $3,200. So we paid about $700 more than we would have if we bought from Walmart, but we saved about $1,000 than we would if we bought comparable quality from a local farm. Another important factor in determining return on investment is considering the quality of the meat that we got. There's really no comparison between the meat that you get from Walmart and the meat that you can raise yourself or get from a local farm. Having the pigs be able to exercise and get a varied diet does a lot to their meat quality. The pork chops that we ate the other night tasted like steak. They were marbled nicely with fat and they had a very rich flavor. And we usually get our pork chops or pork tenderloin from Walmart. And so I could tell instantly about the taste difference between the two meats. And it is a consideration that we knew that our pork was hormone free, antibiotic free, and we knew the feed that they were getting. Most of all, it just tastes way better. I never liked sausage. My whole life I never liked sausage. I would only eat bacon and never sausage until I tried sausage from a local farm nearby. And it is delicious. There's so much of a difference in flavor and a lot less fat that comes on the pan. 
when you cook it. When I would brown sausage from Walmart or the grocery store, it would be thick and fat after it was browned. And this barely has any leftover fat. It's more lean, but also more flavorful. So the quality of the meat is just far superior than you would get from the grocery store. So instead of paying that premium price from a local farmer, you can raise it on your own for a little bit less money. Now the third consideration in determining return on investment is less to do with money and more to do with just the ethics of raising pigs. I won't get too far into it because I would never judge anybody for buying meat from the grocery store. Far from it. Whatever is available to you and within your budget, I definitely respect. But if I can support a local business or raise pigs myself to where I know that they had a happy life, I'm happy to do so. So I know that my pigs got fresh air. They would run around the tree and play together. They got out quite a few times and would run laps around our property. They would get table scraps from our kitchen and they got love. And so I'm really happy about the process. I am very happy that we didn't end up paying more money than we would have if we bought it from a local farm. I already knew that we wouldn't be saving money versus paying at the grocery store, but there are just so many benefits to this process that I'm so happy with it. Another great thing is that in raising these pigs, I'm showing my kids the hard work that it takes to raise an animal and the benefit that you get from it. A lot of kids don't know where meat comes from. They think that you just get it at the grocery store and that's what it is. It was never really an animal. And so for them to see the whole process of us taking care of a tiny little pig, giving it food and taking care of it until it grows to be three, 400 pounds, and then having all of the meat taken home from the processor. I think it's a great lesson for them and I'm happy to give that to them. One last thing that I didn't mention earlier are just the startup costs associated with us raising the pigs. We won't have these costs every year. We will be able to reuse the materials that we bought and used this year, but prices for fencing and feeders and waterers that, that was pretty expensive. We spent about $1,000 on the startup costs, including their fencing, their feeder, their water, their shelter, and that we will be able to reuse next year. Also, we did purchase two freezers in order to store the meat. We have the meat currently filling a 15 cubic foot freezer. Those go for about $750, but we got ours used in good condition for $200. And we also are filling up about half of a seven cubic foot freezer. And I think those are about $200 new and you can find them for about $100 used. So that was an investment as well and we'll continue to use those. There also are annual costs with keeping those freezers. It costs about $93 a year in energy costs to run those freezers. I didn't calculate that into my price per pound though because it's going to be the same price whether you raised your own pork or you bought that amount from Walmart for some reason or you bought a whole or half pig from a local farmer. You would need that storage space. So if you want to consider that into your price, then keep that into consideration. Next year, we do plan to reuse their fencing materials, the T-posts, the hog panels, and their feeder, their water, and I will either have to make them a new shelter or we will buy a shelter similar to what the goats have, their mobile shelter and that was about $250. So I might make a little investment into them next year again into buying another shelter, but I think overall, hopefully our cost should be a lot less next year. And the money that we spent on the startup, which was about $1,000, was already really paid for if we had bought the same amount of meat from a local farmer because it was a thousand dollar difference us raising versus getting it from a farm. So we already got our investment back now and then in the future we will have less and less costs associated with raising pigs. So if you haven't guessed, yes, I do think that it's worth it to raise pigs on your own. The price difference between your three options, buying the meat from the grocery store, 
raising them on your own and buying them from a local farm. There's a big price difference between the three, but thankfully raising your own pigs falls somewhere in the middle. And I think getting the same quality is worth the investment. Next year, we are hopefully going to change a few things to bring the cost of our pigs down a little bit. I'm hoping that we will be able to plant a garden specifically for the pigs. So corn, soybeans, squash, I still have to figure it out, but a lot of different things that they can eat more out of the garden. I tried to feed them as much out of the garden this year as I could, but now I want to have a dedicated space for them. So with those improvements, reducing the cost of feed, which is our biggest cost in those pigs, it'll bring the price per pound down even more and make it even more competitive with buying meat from the grocery store. Even though I'm not worried, I don't think it ever will beat Walmart's prices and I'm okay with that. One thing I didn't calculate into my cost for raising the pigs is the labor that we put in. And I can't really quantify that, only that they were really easy, except for them getting out, which if you saw my earlier pig video of taking them to the processor, you saw some of the work that went into that. They were really pretty easy to raise. Once we got their paddock secure so they couldn't get out, it really only took about three minutes a day to go and check on their food and water. Having that 55 gallon waterer really saved a lot of time because I would only have to fill that up once a week. We also did have a 200 pound capacity feeder that we would only have to put in feed probably once every six days or so. So really most days it was just walking up to their area, checking their food and water, checking on them to make sure that they were okay and moving on. Other days we would just have to hook up the hose and fill up their water or throw a few bags of feed into their feeder. There was nothing else that I had to do with them other than muck out their pen, which it did take about an hour, and I did that probably once every two to three weeks. That is another change that I might make next year, is I might do more of a deep bedding system so we can start using that manure to compost, and that will save even more time and energy mucking out their pen. So I can't really quantify that. However, I can say that they were really easy and I don't think that it was that much work to do. I hope you enjoyed this video, looking at a cost breakdown of what it took to raise our pigs and the benefits of getting meat from our own backyard. We definitely think it was worth the investment and we're excited to do it again next year. I hope that if you have the space and the willingness to put in the work, that you consider raising your own pigs or even just supporting a local farmer to get farm-raised pork. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.